If you've got Crossfire or Tracer and you've got DJI, then you've got a problem because the DJI goggles are not capable of showing link quality LQ in their on-screen display. They can show signal strength, RSSI, but RSSI is actually not the, the, the metric that you need to be concerned about if you're concerned about how far can I fly and am I about to fail safe? LQ is actually what you want. So today I'm going to show you a workaround that lets you put LQ into the DJI goggles. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. In a previous video, I showed you how the Betaflight OSD can now read LQ and RSSI directly from the Crossfire telemetry. You don't need to do any kind of weird aux channel workaround hacks like you used to. Um, you can just go into the OSD tab and you can find link quality. Where is it at? There it is. Link quality. You turn it on and it appears on screen and it actually shows the RF mode. That is whether you're in 150 hertz or 50 hertz uh, mode and the link quality from 0 to 99 or 0 to 100 percent. But DJI doesn't support that. So in order to get LQ into the OSD of the DJI goggles, we actually have to go back to the old way that we did it. And if you've done it before, if you if I say use the aux channel method to put LQ into the flight controller as RSSI and then have the DJI goggles show RSSI, but the RSSI is really LQ and Bob's your uncle. Well, for about 4% of you, you don't even need to watch the rest of the video. For everybody else who didn't follow along with that, let's do it step by step. First thing I'm going to need to do is plug in a Crossfire receiver. You're going to need the receiver on and bound in order to set this up. Then in my radio, I'm going to go into the Crossfire configuration Lewis script menu. And I'm going to go to the Nano RX or whatever receiver you're using. It's probably the Nano RX, right? And we're going to go down to the output map. And not this output map, actually, no, the channel map. I always get the names of those mixed up. We're going to go to the channel map and we're going to set one of our output channels to output RSSI or actually what we're going to do is LQ, not RSSI. If you want to know why I keep saying that LQ is a thing to care about and not RSSI, I've got another video about why in Betaflight 4.2, Crossfire's RSSI doesn't seem to read as high as it used to. Why did Betaflight 4.2 make the RSSI go down? Is it a bug? Is it a, what you should do about it? I'll put a link to that in the video description down below. You can check that out when you're done with this one. So I like to use channel eight. And uh, this does mean you're going to give up one of your eight channels. So be it. I'm going to click and I'm going to set that to output LQ. And there you could also have it output LQ slash RSSI, which is kind of like the worst of the two, whichever the two is worst, you get it. But it can be a little confusing. And, and I, I think you should just set it to LQ because LQ is the thing you really need to care about. So we're going to set the receiver to output LQ on channel eight. And as a reminder, that is being set up in the receiver. So that's going to work for just this one quad. And you're going to need to do this on all of the quads that you want to do this on. Okay. Having done that, let's go to the receiver tab and we should see now that aux for channel eight is at a value of 2000, the maximum possible value. That means we're outputting the maximum possible LQ and it seems like it's working. And if I just kind of put my hand over the antenna just a little, well, frankly, we're so close here. It's just going to read hundred percent all the time, but that is correctly working. The next thing I'm going to need to do is go over here to the right side of the receiver tab where we have the RSSI channel. And we're going to set that RSSI channel to be aux4, which is channel 8. Aux4 is what I set to read the LQ. And we're going to hit save. There's one other thing you should check if you're going to do this. You should go to the configuration tab and you should make sure that the option RSSI ADC is disabled. The next thing we need to do is go to the OSD tab and turn on RSSI. And actually, if you look right here at my, this is my default OSD setup for my DJI quads. Actually, this is for the DJI quads with GPS. So since this quad doesn't have GPS, we can just turn off all the GPS related things. 
And that's pretty much how things usually look for me. Yeah, perfect. And you can see I've got RSSI set up here. I've got average cell voltage and a few other things. I'll put a copy of my OSD setup in the video description as well. And if you want to copy this, I use this on all my DJI quads and I think it works pretty well. Um, it lines up really well with the existing OSD elements. Anyway, whatever. Uh, but you can see I've got RSSI here. I've got it turned on and RSSI value. This is the OSD element. And that is now going to be showing us LQ, not RSSI. Now at this point, you should be able to see RSSI in your DJI goggles. If you don't, then do you have your OSD working at all? Setting up the OSD is a topic for another video, but suffice it to say, you need the TX and the RX wires, the white and the gray wires from the air unit, or on the Vista, it's whatever color wires you used, you just solder them on. The TX and the RX wires from the DJI unit need to go to the RX and the TX pads of a UART on your flight controller. And then here in the ports tab, you need to enable the MSP column for that UART, and that gets the OSD working. The other thing you need to do is turn on the custom OSD option in your goggles, as you see here. So at this point, you see the RSSI in the goggles, but in fact, the RSSI is actually LQ. It's actually link quality. Now, just so I don't have to keep holding a GoPro in the goggles while I'm trying to make this video, instead of looking in the goggles, we're going to look here at the setup screen. And we're just going to look at the RSSI here because how does that RSSI translate to link quality. Link quality has two components. One is the RF mode, which is whether you are in short range, low latency, 150 hertz, or as you fly further away, it drops from 150 hertz down to 50 hertz and then gives you just gobs and gobs of range at slightly higher latency. Well, if you've got the LQ in the OSD, then it just shows you RF mode one, link quality 100 but it doesn't work like that when you've got RSSI. Here's how it does work. I'm going to go into the Crossfire Configure menu and go into the Nano RX, and you should see that I have it set to RF profile 150 hertz. I do this for all my freestyle quads. I lock them to 150 hertz, and all this, this reduces the range from forever to more than I ever need. It still it gives me consistent low latency. That means that the RF mode on this quad is always going to be RF mode 2. See, what I was expecting it to do was like when it's in 150 hertz mode, it's from like 90 to 100 percent. And then when it's in 50 hertz mode, it's from like 80 to 90 percent or something. But it just stayed at 100 percent. I wonder if it's smart enough to know that it's in locked at 50 Hertz. And so there's no point in doing, it's just, it's just how much is your LQ? There's no RF mode. I wonder if I set this to RF mode dynamic, then will it do the thing I'm trying to demonstrate? So in dynamic RF mode, it'll start out in 150 Hertz, but then when the quad gets further away and it drops to 50 Hertz, let's see what happens. Here, let's go to the telemetry screen. And we can find the RF mode. There it is, RF mode 2. And OK, let's go. And even though I've got this set at 25 milliwatts, it's not going to go to RF mode 1 anywhere in my house. So we're going to have to go to some extreme measures to get it. So this is my go-to, is to go to, to go to my car. And I put it in my car. It's a big metal cage and cinder block walls. Crap, that didn't work. Okay, hang on. Maybe if I just like go upstairs, get a couple floors of the house between between us. Okay, surely that's gonna force star of mode one, right? Or even fail safe. Oh, there it is, there it is. Got it. I just had to wiggle the antenna a little bit. Okay, let's go downstairs and see what the RSSI is doing. The reason I've been doing all this work to figure out how the LQ works is I want to be able to tell you what LQ value is the value where you know that you need to turn around and come home because you're about to fail safe. And it turns out that the answer to that question depends on whether you are using dynamic profile or fixed 150 hertz profile. 
So if you're using dynamic profile, which is the default that Crossfire ships with, that means that you'll be in 150 hertz mode two when you're close to yourself. And then as you fly further away, it'll fail over to mode one. And in that case, anytime you are in mode two, the RSSI will read 99%. Basically, since Crossfire knows that it can fail over to mode one, it knows you're nowhere near a fail safe and it just stays at 99%. Then as it goes into mode one and the LQ continues to drop, the RSSI begins to drop and the threshold that you need to be aware of is 80%. Somewhere between above 80%, you're fine. Somewhere between 80 and 70%, you're probably gonna fail safe. And if you're below 70%, I don't know how you're still in the air. Okay, so 80% is the threshold when you're in dynamic profile, which is the default profile that Crossfire ships with. If you are locked at 50 hertz, which I don't know why you would ever do that, but if you chose to do that, the, the advice is the same. At 80%, that's when you should start thinking about turning around. If you're like me and you lock your radio to 150 hertz mode two, then the advice is a little different. The Link quality threshold where you need to think about turning around is like 30, 35%. It can go way lower. When you're in dynamic mode, it actually switches to RF mode one around 70, 80% because it's just like, ah, screw it, why push it? But if you lock it to 150 hertz, it has no choice and you can just keep going. But it's really important that you know that if you are locked in mode two, you don't have to turn around at 70 or 80%. You can keep going much further than that. And the reason that's important is if you're locked in mode two, you will it will drop off way faster than if you're in mode one. And so if you were turning around at 80% LQ, you would have like no range and you'd be like, what is up? You can go way further down to about 30, maybe 40% LQ if you're locked in mode two. Before we finish up, there's one other thing you should do and that involves the fail safe settings. Here in the fail safe tab, go to the channel fallback settings, find your aux channel that you're using for RSSI or LQ really, but Betaflight thinks it's RSSI and change that from hold to set and change the set value to 1000 and save and reboot. What that's gonna do is when you fail safe, not that you're ever gonna fail safe because Crossfire never fail safes, but if you somehow manage to fail safe, the default uh, behavior of Betaflight is to hold the aux channel at its previous value, which will mean that while you're fail safing and your quad's falling out of the air, the RSSI will say 70% or whatever the last thing it said was. Uh, what this does is it causes the channel to go to 1000, the lowest possible value of the channel, which means that when you fail safe or when your quad is unplugged, the RSSI will read 0%, which is what you would expect. And that's going to bring us to the end of the video. Now you know everything you need to know to use LQ in your DJI goggles. I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end of the video. YouTube loves that. And if you love this content, I'd like to remind you that I do have a Patreon. It's a very simple way for you to support me and the work that I do by paying as little as $2 a month. That's my lowest Patreon tier, $2 a month. Uh, there's a link in the video description to sign up. Two bucks a month, forget about it. It's a small amount for you, hopefully, uh, but uh, it really does add up and it really matters a lot to me. So that's, uh, that's my plug for this video. I'll put a link to some more Crossfire videos down in the video description if you're not convinced yet. Thanks for watching, happy flying. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Use my affiliate links. Or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Cuckoo Kaka, subscribe to my daddy.